Now, look, uh, a, a lot of bad things happen uh, in 2016, especially during the election. And after all, we elected a orange buffoon to the highest uh, office in the land. Not only that, but Democrats all across the board got basically slaughtered. But there was some good news. Um, some states actually did some rather good things. Now, one example is Maine. Now, in Maine, a majority of people proved a, a, a actually uh, voted for uh, a valid initiative that would change from the traditional single candidate vote to something called a ranked choice system. Now, that basically means that any candidates who capture a majority outright happen to be winners. But if nobody gains a majority, then the person who gets the lowest amount of votes ends up getting dropped, and voters who pick that candidate now have uh, those votes go to the next highest choice. And it gets eliminated until there's a clear winner who gets the most votes. It's actually a far more democratic system. The candidates are all re-ranked until somebody ends up uh, winning with the majority. That's far more, as I said, democratic and actually happens to avoid spoilers. So no longer could they say, oh no, you're being a spoiler, so you shouldn't be on a run in that race. But if you're the second choice, well then you're going to get a lot of those votes that the lower choice uh, had. So again, it's far more representative, right? So you can truly uh, vote your conscience without having to worry about, for example, electing a monster. That's awesome. Now, this, and it does so by, of course, discouraging the voting for a uh, lesser two evils mindset. Since again, if your first choice isn't picked, that's okay because your second choice could end up actually winning or at least has a shot. Now, it's pretty clear that this is what the people wanted for, right? They're like, yes, we wanted ranked choice voting in Maine, so we put this on the ballot, we actually uh, voted for it, and we got it approved. Democracy, right? Well, look, I talked about monsters, right? Well, here's one, <laughs> Governor Paul LePage. Now, this guy's a terrible human being, uh, and among the other terrible things he's done he's decided to block the measure. Not only that, but the state legislature and the courts also blocked implementation of the people's will. Now, one of the arguments of the courts says that Maine's constitution only requires a plurality of votes, not a majority, for a victory, so they said that the ranked choice system was ruled unconstitutional, so it doesn't actually fit with the Maine constitution. Now, I think that's crap, and I'll explain later. However, not all is lost, because even though it's facing gigantic opposition, there is a way for people in Maine to actually pull a victory. Now, this is according to the Washington Times. Residents are now pushing to overturn that decision, and I love the, the name of this. They have until February 5th to enact something called the People's Veto that would authorize a referendum to overturn the legislative hold on the law's implementation. So right there, the people could say, hey, you know what? I actually want this uh, ranked choice voting system. I think it's a far more democratic system. And so I don't care what you think, legislature. We've got the people's veto. We're going to drop it on your heads. Okay, that's awesome. But what about the constitutional issue? You think that might uh, also hold it up? Well, you have uh, Dimitri Dam, a lawyer based in Maine, who said that ranked choice voting is not unconstitutional. It's actually very constitutional. He said, quote, The person with the most votes is still the winner. The real question is, can a vote be a ranked choice vote, or does a vote have to be one person? That's it? The court gets it wrong that ranked choice voting is in a plurality system. Now, again, that argument used by the court, ridiculous, right? Oh, it's not a plurality system. Well, how so? Again, the people who get the most votes still end up winning. It actually just gives people a choice. And if they overwhelmingly choose a candidate, well, then they win. And if they don't, then it's actually divided. And then they eliminate the lowest vote, getting a redistribution of votes until they actually do find a clear winner. It actually makes a lot of sense. But here's the rationale, right? Here's some of the arguments that opponents of this system actually are, are using. Now, they say that the system puts a huge burden on voters who will need to learn ranked choice voting and on state election officials for whom uh, vote counting becomes far more complex. 
So wait a minute here. So they're willing to overrule the will of the people and then claim that they're protecting the people. Oh, no, no, no. See, I don't want you to change the system, voters, because it's going to make it harder for you. No, sit back. Let us take, uh, you know, let, let us take care of everything. And let's just give you the binary choice that you're used to. We know you don't like change. No, actually, we do like change. That's why we voted for it. It's a ridiculous argument. Now, uh, another argument uh, is oh, why would why do we need this in the first place? And this is made by Matthew Gagnon of the Maine Heritage Center, saying, "Quote: My main argument against it is what is ultimately get, uh, what is this ultimately getting us that we don't already have? Well, I don't know, Matt. How about a choice? <laughs> Look, the problem with voting today in our regular system." is that people, I think, feel like they have to vote for the lesser of two evils. That's a bit of a problem, because that goes to, uh, that makes people refuse to want to vote, <clears throat> or actually refuse to want to vote their conscience. So many people, they don't like the two choices that were given, and they either hold their nose, or they vote for a candidate that they feel that they uh, align with more, which could lead to spoilerism, et cetera. And then, of course, one side blames the, the people that vote for a third party, et cetera, and it gets uh, gross. Um, or they just sit home and they refuse to vote and take advantage of this or, uh, and, and, and participate in the system. Well, I don't like that system, and the people in Maine don't like that system, and they want to change that system. <clears throat> so, yes, what we're getting here with ranked choice voting is actually a choice. Again, this guy doesn't get it, but anyway, he continues. I think it's a terrible way of making a selection for any office. I don't like the concept of making decisions blindly like that. When you're asked to vote for the president or any other office, you know who candidates and options are. So not only is he saying, ah, it's not really going to add anything. He's also saying, hey, people of Maine, you're too stupid to make your own decisions. So uh, when it comes to ranked choice voting, it's too hard for you. I want you to have these two pre-approved choices to choose from. You take the 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 red peep, the red team or the blue team. And we're not going to give you a chance to vote for the green team or for the you know, fuchsia team or for the teal team. No, no, we're not going to give you any of those options. That's too difficult for you. Look at the disdain these people have for you. They think you're not smart enough to make your own decisions. It's gross. <laughs> now. And look, here's the thing, right? If we change the system, that's actually going to get more people involved. Because when you give people choices, they might actually be more inclined to get involved. But the Republican Party in Maine, as you're going to see, is unsurprisingly against this. Not for your benefit, of course, for their own. Because it turns out that the Republicans traditionally always have an advantage when people don't vote. And when given choices, people look at it. And go, well, hey, man, look, I don't really want to vote for the Republican because their policies kind of suck. I'm interested in this independent or inter in interested in this green or, hell, even for right-wingers, this constitutional party. Oh, the, there's a party that actually follows the Constitution. The Republicans have no idea what the Constitution is. They claim that they do, but no, I'm going to go with this party. And we're going to do this ranked choice. Or, And look, it, you know, nationally, when you look at it, if you were running a primary, for example, using ranked choice voting, I think that we would have a definitely a different outcome. Not just in a primary, but for example, in a general election. We might actually have Hillary Clinton as president if you used ranked choice voting. Whether you agree with that decision or, or think that's a good or a bad thing, well, it's up to you guys. I'm just pointing out that the reality that we live in could have been a lot different if voters actually had a choice using this system. Now, Republicans, as I said, at least on a, on a level when it comes to Maine, are not in favor of ranked choice systems. Um, and again, it's not because they want to make it easier for you to vote or anything like that. No, Republicans traditionally might try to make it harder for you to vote by putting up voter suppression laws. So don't fall for it, uh, whatever they say, because you know it's 
Look, it's being delivered with a forked tongue. <laughs> now, those who did back this ranked choice system in Maine as a ballot initiative was actually uh, a couple of parties that you would expect and one that you wouldn't. The Libertarian Party of Maine, the Maine in, uh, Green Independent Party, two parties that would benefit massively uh, for an expansion into ranked choice voting, and also the Maine Democratic Party. Again, Libertarians and Greens, they've actually got a lot to gain in this system. However, both Republicans and Democrats actually uh, have a lot to lose in ranked choice voting. But you know who else would gain? Democracy. So that's why I'm going to give the Maine Democrats actually a lot of credit here for supporting this. Because, again, they could lose out in this system. But they're doing the right thing despite all of that. So here's hoping that the people can get enough of, uh, can, can get together and launch this people's veto and make sure that Maine can actually become the first state to have ranked choice voting, to actually embrace a real choice when it comes to elections. And let's hope that Maine, if that happens, is only the start, that we can see a real transformation of the voting process all around the country. If Maine's the first domino, well then, well done, the people of Maine. So let's hope you guys can get it done. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.